The Lord is risen. This is Father Joe Cassetti with you once again. Thank you for joining me. We've been exploring the three central mysteries of the Christian faith. And today we're ready for the third mystery, the Paschal mystery. Quick review. A mystery is not the same as a problem. A problem is balancing your checkbook. You find the missing check and the problem is solved. That's it. Mysteries are things we grow about, we grow in, things we learn more about, and there's always things more there. You don't really ever exhaust them. And so we've explored the Trinity. God is love, St. John tells us. We've explored the Incarnation from the Gospel of John, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Thus we celebrate at Christmas, and now we look at the Paschal Mystery. Again, we turn to St. John, chapter 12 of his Gospel. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The Paschal Mystery is this movement from life through death into new life that Jesus pioneered and in which we all follow, this dying and rising. Now, obviously, this is what we celebrate at Easter. So the Incarnation, we remember that God is so great that he can make himself small. The Paschal Mystery, Easter, reminds us that God is so powerful that he can make himself weak. Jesus was obedient even unto death, death on a cross, and because of this, God highly exalted him. That's what St. Paul says to the Philippians. And so the Passover celebrates this liberation of the Jewish people from the slavery in Egypt. And the word Paschal has its roots, as I understand it, in passing over. And so the angel of death passed over the homes of the Israelites that were marked by the blood of the Lamb. And then they passed through the waters of the Red Sea into the land where they were nourished with manna, the bread from heaven. And in our baptism, we leave the slavery of sin. We pass through those waters of baptism and we enter into the land where we are nourished with the true bread from heaven, where we are nourished with the Eucharist. So it's connected to baptism. We enter into this Paschal mystery through our baptism. St. Paul says to the Romans, chapter 6, Are you not aware that you who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death so that you might share in his resurrection, his dying and rising, his Paschal mystery? Through our baptism, we are grafted onto that dying and rising of Jesus. At Easter, we make a renewal of our baptismal promises as a reminder of that for all of us. Now, once again, let's turn to some images that help illustrate these mysteries. So, one of them we've already talked about, a grain of wheat, a seed, a bulb, something that's buried in the ground, something that dies, so to speak, and yet there's new life that emerges. We have another image with us. It's with us every day. It's called sunset and sunrise. We see it every year in the seasons. There's the death of fall and winter, and then there's that new life of spring, that explosion of those beautiful colors blossoming and just that freshness that you can feel in the air with spring and the emergence of all the green. In Italian and Spanish, the word for the season of spring is primavera, the first green. What a beautiful description. There is this first green. There is this blossoming of new life that we see. And we also find it, for example, in the caterpillar. The caterpillar 
that encloses itself in a tomb and then eventually emerges transformed as a butterfly. Images of the Paschal mystery abound. Now, each of these mysteries require the previous one. So, Jesus cannot truly die and rise unless he is truly human. So, the incarnation is God becoming human in the person of Jesus. The Paschal mystery is what he does ultimately once he gets here. So, the Paschal mystery requires the incarnation. The incarnation is the second person of the Trinity becoming human in the person of Jesus. So, obviously, it requires the Trinity. So, each of these are connected, and these are all something that becomes the foundation for all the Christian life. No matter what it is, basically in the Christian life, ultimately it can be distilled to these three central mysteries. And these aren't uniquely Catholic. All Christians, in one way, shape, or form, for the most part, are going to hold to these. And these are distinctively Christian, particularly, or at least, the Trinity and the Incarnation. Look at the other great monotheistic religions of Judaism and Islam. Okay. We all say there is one God. They'll say there is one God, period. We would say there is one God who is three in one and one in three, and that the Christian experience of God points to the Trinity. We would all say God is merciful, God is loving, God is compassionate. They would say God is other. And we say God is merciful, loving, compassionate, God is other, but God also becomes one of us. In the person of Jesus, God comes to share life with us in a real concrete, visible, concrete, tactual way. And so that God lives life with us now. And so to a good Jew or to a good Muslim, to talk of the Trinity or the Incarnation, to put it bluntly, is blasphemy. Now, we certainly have these points of convergence that we all agree on, but we also have distinctive points. We have points of divergence, and these are some of our points of divergence as well. The Christian life is ultimately about trying to grow in the image of Jesus, the risen Christ. It's about seeking to grow in these mysteries. The Blessed Trinity, we're to live in a communion of life and love. The Incarnation, God shares life with us. The Paschal Mystery, we share in the dying and in the rising of Jesus. Now, I've got an illustration here. A number of years ago, someone in the parish I was at gave me this because every class of the RCA that I teach, I talk about these. So there is the Trinity or God. There is the incarnation, literally the enfleshment. And then there is the Paschal mystery. And then to the right, you see God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that outpouring of love with the arrows inside the circle, one God, three persons, and God is a communion of life and love. As I said, our goal is really to seek to grow in these mysteries, not exhaust them, but it's because we can't exhaust them, but to seek to grow in these mysteries, to live these mysteries, and to share these mysteries with others by our words, but certainly by how we live, that we might continue to share the good news of Jesus who reveals God to us in such a marvelous way and that God is three in one, one in three, that in the person of Jesus, God has taken on human life and shared it with us and that we share in his dying and rising that comes about through his incarnation so that we might share in that life and love of the Trinity. And we continue at this point to pray for each other that we might grow on that journey of faith. And we continue to pray for each other 
and for our suffering world.